Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV, it is me Paul Needham, your host and I'm here to do a reaction video from the top 10 prospects for the Republic of Ireland national team from 2019. I'm going to take a look back at the players that were chosen then and see how they're doing now. But firstly this video is sponsored by Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com and check out their products from the Lawnmower 3.0, the Weed Whacker which is for your nose hair and your ear hair and of course all their other products there they've deodorant they've cologne they've got aftershave and so on use the code ifftv20 for 20 percent off plus free shipping so back to our list at number 10 it is lee o'connor lee o'connor at the time was playing for manchester united and he had captained the underage irish team he's since gone on to sign for celtic it didn't really work out for him so far on at celtic but he went along to party thistle just the coronavirus seemed to cut that short and then this season he's gone on loan to Tramir Rovers. But in the middle of all that he did get his first cap under Mick McCarthy against New Zealand for the Republic of Ireland national team and he was a key player in the under 21 squad with 11 appearances and one goal. So it's safe to say that he was one of the better picks of that list and probably didn't deserve to be at number 10 but he is doing well so far this season at Tranmere. And he's got 16 appearances. It might be 17 since this is filmed, but he's doing very well this season. And hopefully that will help his development and he can go back to Celtic and maybe break into the first team there. Number nine, Conor Masson at QPR. He had just been released by Liverpool at the time and didn't really know whether or not he was going to come back to Ireland or not, I suppose. But QPR took a gamble on him and... You know, he's gone on to be one of the best players in the under-21 setup as well. He was key to their good campaign before they started losing players. But Conor Masson was a regular in the under-21 squad. Obviously scored a header against Sweden as well in one of the games. And last season, after January, he started to get a bit of a run in the QPR team. He's been kind of in and out since then. But you'd like to hope that he will start getting some appearances for QPR and go on to better things in the future because he looks like a really good defender. And he looks like he just needs game time now to aid his development. At number eight, it's Gavin Bazunu, Another player really highly rated as a youngster. Left for Man City very, very young. And has gone to Man City. He's featured for the under-23 team. Last season, a good bit. He actually travelled with the senior squad in the summer. For the season before last as well. Was out training with the goalkeepers and everything like that. He has got a loan move to Rochdale this season. And has obviously featured for the under-21s as well when Cuevin Kelleher hasn't been there. So he had played the most recent games for the under-21s as well. Really solid goalkeeper and has just been injured at Rochdale but got his place back at the weekend. So hopefully he will start kicking on now and we'll start seeing the best of him. And who knows, in the next couple of years, he could be in the senior setup. But at the moment, he's progressing really, really well. As part of that loan deal with Rochdale, he extended his contract with Manchester City. So it's clearly evident that they really rate him and he's gone from strength to strength since moving to England which is great to see. At number seven, it's Adam Ida. Adam Ida obviously had his first season in the Premier League last year. He was largely used as a substitute um, with Timo Pukki ahead of him in the pecking order. So naturally that was always going to be the case unless something happened to Pukki. But I thought when he did come on, he done well. He had 12 appearances. He obviously got a hat-trick in the FA Cup against Preston as well. So he has done okay. He probably would have liked to have got more Premier League appearances and probably would have liked to have got a few more goals as well. Norwich were, were down comfortably before the end of the Premier League season. Obviously, it was cut short with momentum because of the coronavirus. But he finished the season strong. Then Stephen Kenny obviously was promoted as senior team manager and called him up. But he did have a really good spell as under-21 striker scoring Five goals and 11 appearances for the under 21. So he was a really key player for them. And he's gone on then to cap be capped by Stephen Kenny then in the summer just gone. Stephen Kenny really seems to trust him. He started in his first game as well against Bulgaria. And other than injury, he seems to be Stephen Kenny's main man. So it'll be interesting to see how his career keeps going. He's injured at the moment, hoping to get back soon. And hopefully we'll see him banging in goals and help Norwich get promoted. And maybe next season he'll get more game time in the Premier League, scoring goals and leading the line for Ireland. At number six, it's Cuevin Kelleher at Liverpool. At the time, Cuevin Kelleher, everyone was wondering what is he going to do? Is he going to stay around Liverpool? What is he going to do? 
He went on to be the under-21 keeper, training with the Irish team a few times and has recently been called up to the squad. But he was a really solid goalkeeper for the under-21s. Bided his time at Liverpool and up until recently now, and he got into the team. He played three games, one against Midland in the Champions League. Then he played another game against Ajax in the Champions League and against Wolves and really impressed. So much so that Jurgen Klopp ran onto the pitch to give him a hug after the game because he was so happy with him. So it, it seems as though Kelleher now is the number two at Liverpool. He seems to have overtaken Adrian and it's really gone well for him now. And I suppose that the fact he didn't go out on loan and the fact that he stayed and bided his time probably worked out really well in his favour. And it seems as though Klopp really likes him and he's done himself no harms in staying in contention for the number one position for March in the World Cup qualifiers, albeit he stays injury free but he will definitely be in the squad. So he's really gone on since that rating. He got number six at the time, but he's gone on to do really good things. So fair play to him. And number five, it's Aaron Connolly. And he's probably the most prestigious of the list in the end. He obviously broke onto the scene after a couple of under-21 appearances for Ireland. A really good game against Armenia, setting up the goal for Troy Parrish. And then went on to make his Brighton debut a couple of weeks later, scoring the two goals against Spurs and then really propelling them into the national team and getting himself into the squad as well. Mick McCarthy giving him his first cap against Georgia and then his first start against Switzerland. He kind of didn't really enjoy a whole load of goals in his first season, but he scored a goal on the last day and finished the season on 24 appearances and three goals, but he was in and out through injury and obviously the coronavirus in between that. So he was actually able to come back in and, and, and get some performances under his belt and, and some games. So it was good for him in that sense. He had 11 appearances and two goals so far this season. And he also has been promoted by Stephen Kenny to the national team for the first team. And whenever he's been available, he started. He missed out through a couple of things through COVID. And at the moment, he's out with a hamstring injury. But definitely has gone on to show what he's about and what he can do for the future. He definitely looks like someone who we will be looking upon for the next years to come to be the man who helps us get to tournaments and so on. And number four, it's Ryan Nolan, who was at Inter Milan at the time and was then sold. He was then sold to Arezzo and he went on loan to Gianna Arnino and then back to Arezzo. And he signed for Getafe from Arezzo and had been training with their B team but up until recently, he was going to be put into the Copa del Rey squad and he was going to, he was due to play, but he got injured. He, he'd done his ACL in training, unfortunately, so he didn't actually get to do that. So at the moment, his season is over, but you would hope that the progress he's made, that when he comes back next year, if he gets a few games under his belt and comes back at a similar enough level, that he'll be picked in a La Liga squad soon enough. And that can only be good for Ireland to see how he progresses. But it's a bit crazy hearing of a player who's played for Inter Milan and is now playing in La Liga. But hopefully he can keep doing what he's doing. And when he gets back, then hopefully get back into the squad. He still hasn't been picked at underage level. There's nothing raised to say why that is the case, but we'll wait and see what's, what's happening there. At number three, and no longer in Irish International, is Ryan Johansson, who was at Bayern Munich at the time and had declared for the Republic of Ireland due to a rule with FIFA and the fact that he had played for Luxembourg at an underage European tournament. He had a passport for Sweden and Luxembourg at the time, didn't have one for Ireland and played for Luxembourg. So ultimately FIFA have deemed that enough for him not to be able to declare for the Republic of Ireland. He's now declared for Sweden because of it. Not through his fault, but it's through a FIFA rule. Um, he signed for Sevilla, so he's basically playing for Sevilla's B team at the moment, making eight appearances and one assist so far, but he's progressing really nicely there. And Monchi seems to be a big fan of his. He's probably going to be a big loss for Ireland if he does go on to do good things with Sevilla and it's just one that seems to have gotten away unfortunately and that's just the way it is with him. At number two it is Troy Parrott, one who always seemed like he was going to be destined for the top and the highest rated of a lot of the players in the media. Troy has kind of been in and out of the Spurs squad and Jose Mourinho gave him his debut last year in uh, towards the end of a game and Son had actually got a hat-trick and Mourinho gave Parrot the ball because it was his debut, which was a nice touch at the time. But it's up to Troy now to try and force his way into that squad after his loan move this season with Millwall. Hasn't gone great because of injury. He's had nine appearances and one assist so far. You'd like to think that he'll start getting a couple of goals soon. At under-21 level, he was really good as well. Four goals in four games. And he was a real integral 
figure for the under 21s he was obviously capped as well by Mick McCarthy against the, in the game against New Zealand so same game as Leo Connor made as well so he made his debut that day as well and he's kind of just been stop star for Troy that you hope that now in the next couple of seasons that he will kick on and start doing good things at number one it's Michael Obafemi and Michael has enjoyed a couple of good moments in the Southampton shirt, none really in an Irish shirt. He's had a couple of appearances with the under-21s, no goals, but he's come into the squad and done a job when he's been asked. And then at Southampton, most notably, he scored big goals against West Ham, Chelsea and Manchester United in the Premier League. So he's came on as a sub against Manchester United, got that late equaliser, done well against Chelsea from the start. And that goal against West Ham as well it was a really nice finish. So he has definitely got the ability there, but it's about his attitude and can he get himself back in there. So that's totally up to him what he decides to do. And if he puts his mind to it, I'm sure he'll get himself back in contention. But for the most part, he is injured at the minute and he was due to go on loan to Swansea because he's fallen down the pecking order at Southampton he did pick up an injury he's in hospital he had surgery the other day and it seems as though he's on the men for the time being and maybe in the summer he will go for a loan move to someone in the championship or something like that but that's been the list that's been the reaction and that's how they've been getting on so let me know your thoughts in the comments how many of those did you think I rated well and don't forget to check out manscaped.com using the code IFFTV20 for 20% off and free shipping don't forget to subscribe below and I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you for watching.